guys, it's Linda, and for today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the differences that I've experienced between undergrad and pharmacy school. And now by pharmacy school, I mean any kind of like doctoral program, such as like dentistry and also med school. Now, the things I'm about to say are very, they're just like my school, but I feel that my school is very similar to all these other schools as well. So if you have a kind of a personal or something a little bit different, feel free to let me know below. But I'm sad. that's how I've experienced pharmacy school and how I've experienced undergrad. So the first thing that I feel was a huge difference from undergrad life to pharmacy school is the structure. By that, I mean in undergrad, I was given a piece of paper that told me, here you go, 120 uh, credit hours. Yeah, you can probably take 15 a semester, 15 times, you know, two semesters a year, four years, and nah, 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 here's the math, do it in four years. If you need more time, five years. If you can do it in less, great. That's all. So every semester I would go through this list of, oh, I have to take Orgo 1, Orgo 2. Human fizz, uh, you name it, I took it. Or, oh, this class cannot fit in the schedule. This class has a lab section, which means it's going to overlap with this class period, or which means I just, it's it just like, I really felt like I was just in the middle of a huge mess, just even before I even took the classes. And signing up was just so difficult for me. And I really wish I had some kind of structure. Now with pharmacy school, my sk class schedule looks something like, here's a list of the classes I'm going to take. Do you agree to these terms and conditions? I have no choice. X on the box, sign my name. That's it, I'm all done. And um, I know with some pharmacy schools, like you have different lab sections you can sign up for and stuff. But in my school, it's just straight. Um, so this is personally speaking, my school. But in general, with all pharmacy med schools, like I'm almost positive it's like, this is the classes you need to take your second year. This is the classes you need to take your first year. And that's it. You take them, you're done. Now, um, the second thing is that our teachers in pharmacy school know what you've taken. They know what you haven't taken. They know, like, they know what the school is teaching you. So you can't really get away with, we haven't learned that yet because you have learned it. So um, in one of the classes, for example, which is all about um, reading research articles and statistics and all of that. So my teacher, my teacher will bring up that case and he'll ask us all about, it'll be something related to blood pressure and then he'll bring um, blood pressure medication. You can't sit there and say, we haven't learned blood pressure yet because yes, you have. We have learned it. We learned it about three months ago and he will know that. So it's pretty cool that in pharmacy school or these programs like the material will come up in different ways so we learned all about blood pressure medication but now i'm learning it through a research article and they're doing studies on this blood pressure medication that is new and they're comparing it to an old one but this is statistics now but it's still the same um, material that i learned before and i just think that's really cool because in undergrad i never really had the chance to do that like I was taking a calc class on the side and I was taking human fizz and it was just my 15 credits didn't really match up and that's something I struggled with because I just felt like I wish I was always hoping that my classes would connect I would try to connect it on my own so that was something that I was struggling with and with pharmacy school um, Another thing that I loved about pharmacy school is that like for labs, for example, let's say our labs, like we will learn about psych drugs. Let's say last week we learned about psych drugs. Next week we have a lab on psych drugs and the teacher who taught us psych drugs comes to the lab and that way we can ask him questions. We know like, not only did we learn it in class and we most likely had an exam on it, now it's also coming up and the drug expert is there, the teacher who actually taught us all how psych drugs is there. So that is something that's amazing for me because the, my labs in undergrad, to a certain point, they did connect. But 
I would never see the same teacher who was coming, who was teaching me that lecture would walk into class and would elaborate on the material or teach it to us in a, in a hands-on way or teach it to us in a different way. And um, I just think that is like, that's really, really cool. Another thing that is completely different between pharmacy school and undergrad is that most, a lot of undergrads, I mean, you can get into an undergrad with like over about 2.5 cumulative GPA. If you can't make it through this class, if you can't make it through this exam, too bad, done, bye, change your major. Nope, this, this is not fit for you anymore, sorry. With pharmacy school, it's a lot different because you had, you had to do a lot of work to get in. It wasn't just let me write out some form and apply and get in. You had to write a personal statement. You had to do an interview. You had to do so many things and prove to them that, oh my God, I want to be a pharmacist. I want to be a dentist. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a medical doctor because I have A, B, and C reason. I have these qualifications to be a wonderful doctor. Um, these are the classes I've taken. And so they choose you based on your interview. They choose you based on your um, application, your personal statement, your grades. Like you are basically going to them and be like, I, I have the potential to make a great pharmacist. And they will choose you based on that. Pharmacy school, it's like they choose you because they, they know and they trust and they're investing their time in you that's why there's only so many positions also another thing is that i feel like one of the reasons why these schools are so hard some of the schools are very hard to get into like especially like med schools for example is because um there's a lot of patient care and they don't want to choose just anybody they want to choose someone who's like super well-rounded they don't want to see that you just excel academically they want to see that you've done volunteer work that you just haven't lived in a closet for the last four years and that you've been studying and that's all you've done and that, that's it. They want to see that you've done things in the community. You have work experience. Um, like for me, I have, I worked in a pharmacy. If you guys want, I will post the video um, in the link below over my other video, which is of like five things I learned my first semester of undergrad. And also like my undergrad journey where I talk a lot about how I got into pharmacy school. So if you're interested in watching that, they want to see that you have work experience. That's another thing. They don't want to see that this person probably doesn't know what it's like to be a doctor. So and then they've, ever, they've never even entered the doctor's office on, until their own checkups. So they want to see more than that. Um, another thing that I really want to say is that this was my experience and um, so I'm speaking just personal perspective. When I had bad exams in undergrad or occasionally I would be struggling in a class, I would tell my teacher, well, I can't grasp this material. Like I've been studying it. I got some help here and there and it's just not, it's just not, I don't get it. Um, I would get replies like, well, this is where you stand academically. And like, really, that's just how you are. And I would say things like, wait, you're telling me that I can't do above this grade? And they're like, no, you can't. That's just how, you know, all of your exams are going to be like this for the rest of the semester. Hearing that from a teacher, especially when you go out of your way and make an appointment to see them, it's kind of heartbreaking. I did have a few teachers that really encouraged me, but there, when something similar has happened to me in pharmacy school and I go to my teacher and ask them for advice, I've never gotten that reply before. So. When I was struggling in pharmacy school, I'd go to my teacher, he'd be like, well, what did you focus on? He would say, well, next time, really focus on my slides because that's where I really feel like you should spend maybe 90% of your energy. That's something that is really what you're there for in the first place. When you ask a teacher for help, that's what you're asking for. You're saying, how can I improve myself? What can I do to get better? So, that was just my undergrad experience. That's something, that's how I felt about being an undergrad and that's how I feel about being in pharmacy school, I have two completely, two very different experiences. And um, I hope you guys found this video useful. I hope you guys check out my other videos below. See you guys later. If you have any questions about pharmacy or anything like that, um, feel free to let me know in the box. If you're also interested in pharmacy, 
my other videos will explain a lot more about that as well. And good luck with whatever you guys decide to do, and I will see you next time.